Hi, in this video we're going over the five most important things to get you rolling as quickly as possible. I'm Katie and you're watching Skatey. Equipment. The most important thing you're going to need is obviously a pair of roller skates. There are so many to choose from. Um, I would say Rio Rollers and Moxie are very good. Most people say size up. I don't. I say you need your ball of your foot over your wheels. So if you size up, it's gonna be slightly in front of the ball of your foot. So, but that's my personal preference. When you're buying skates, this bit here is a plate. Now some plates are plastic or nylon. If they're plastic, you need to look at the weight limit because there will be a weight limit on them. So they may be child skates and they'll fit your foot, but you need to check the weight limit because obviously you don't want to be skating along and they snap because you're going to be in big trouble. So with wheels, I'm on really soft wheels today because I'm outside on the gravel. So these are a 75, which are about the softest wheels that you can get. If I was indoors in a rink, I'd probably be wearing my 90s or 100s so I can spin easily. So the harder the wheel, the slippier it is and the harder the ride. So if you're going outside, you want a nice soft wheel to give you a soft cruise so you don't feel like you're being vibrated. <laughs> Okay, so if you have a boot like this, you may notice that you've got these little hooks on the side. Now, when I do mine up, I hate when my skates get loose when I'm skating and I have to stop and tighten them up. It drives me crazy. All I want to do is skate. So what I do is I go around the top of the hook downwards and that really locks it in and keeps it really, really tight. So you can concentrate on skating and not doing your skates up every 10 minutes. <laughs> This is the toe stop. You're going to have toe stops when you buy your skates. Some skates will have a screw through them. These have are adjustable, so I put a little Allen key in there and I can adjust the toe stops. They're really good, but obviously some of the cheaper skates, you can't adjust the toe stops. Again, it's something that you have a personal preference on. I like my toe stops quite high when I'm skating outside, just so I don't catch on a stone or something like that. But on my indoor skates, I had them lower so I can do tricks and stuff like that. If you're jam skating, you might take these out completely and put a little rubber bung in or a plug. And that's great too. The plug doesn't really do anything. It's not functional. It just protects the rink from the metal. Now, I would say the most important thing with toe stops is you're going to use them for stopping. So you don't want them too high. So you want your skate at about a 45 degree angle when you, when you put your toe stop down. Any higher, you're going to be off balance. Any lower, you risk, if you're outdoors particularly, you risk catching a stone or something under there when you're skating forwards. You're going to wipe out. You really don't want to do that. So the last piece of equipment that I would highly recommend as a beginner, you will notice that I am not wearing. <laughs> um, pads are really important. As a beginner, they will give you confidence because Falling is inevitable, we're going to talk about falling in a minute. Um, so I'd recommend knee pads, elbow pads, probably wrist pads, or as I've got, leather gloves. And if you fall over on this sort of surface fast, you're, you've got to save yourself somehow, and chances are you're going to use your hands. So I recommend leather gloves, or um, you can get some really nice bike gloves people wear for cycling, they look really good. And you know what? If you really are a beginner and you've never skated before, Maybe popping a cycle helmet on wouldn't be the worst thing that you could do, just to keep yourself safe until you get your balance. And then you can be like me and just be stupid and take everything off. And then when you hit the deck, <laughs> it's bad. But I would personally recommend, as a beginner, definitely kit yourself out with some safety gear. Falling. So falling, we've got to talk about it. It's definitely going to happen, especially when you're learning. So that's why we mentioned about pads. So you definitely want knee pads, elbow pads, wrist pads, and maybe a cycle helmet as well. It's really important to protect yourself when you're skating and it will give you confidence as well. I always say the most important thing with falling is if you can try and control the fall. So bend your knees, 
Get your hands down, try and reach the ground as safely as possible with as few injuries as you can manage. And once you've fallen, you've got to get back up again. So the easiest way to get back up from sitting on the floor on a pair of skates, so one hand either side, get one foot up, then the other, get your balance and up. You're going to be pros in no time. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be challenging because if you've never stood in a pair of roller skates before, the wheels are very free flowing and you literally just kind of, ah! So, bend your knees, keep your knees really, really soft. You want to imagine that there's a line that goes right down the center of your body and you want to keep your shoulders square and your weight right in the middle so you're really solid. Your weight needs to be slightly to the front of the skate. If you keep your weight to the front, it stops you falling back. Trust me, I've done it. You do not want to fall backwards. Keep your weight to the front. Even if you're in this sort of position at first, it doesn't matter. Get confident and then you can straighten up when you get better. But the most important thing at this stage is to get confident and safe. So now you're standing, we're going to put the same thing into practice to get you moving. So you want nice soft knees and the best way to start is with a snake pattern. So with the snake pattern you have your feet pointing out and you're going to lean on your little toe and push. Then when you get to here you're going to lean on your big toe and pull back in again. So the most important thing to remember when you're doing the snake pattern is you don't want your feet to touch together at the front, otherwise we'll be practicing falling. <laughs> So remember, before your feet get too close, you need to swap the weight and take it back onto the little toes and take yourself back out again, like this. Knees soft, arms out. This is the safest way to get started because you haven't got to lift your feet yet. If you're having trouble getting your snake pattern, it might be that your trucks are too tight. If you look at my skate, you see how my wheels can move. If you haven't got movement in your trucks, you're going to find this really hard. So you might need to loosen them off a little bit. So now you've mastered your snake pattern, we're going to start lifting our feet and transferring the body weight. So we're going to march. So the most important thing here is to feel that all of your weight's going on each foot every time. Now what will happen is you should feel that your wheels automatically start to roll. And this is getting us ready for the next bit. So keep your arms out, nice and soft. If you turn your feet outwards, it will help you gain some speed. We're rolling. So let's get you proper skating. So you're really close. So all you need to do now is rather than lifting the knee, is put the knee behind you. And there you are, you're skating. Still keeping those rear knees really soft, transfer the weight to each foot. You'll find if you don't transfer your weight, you'll be skating like this, because your weight is central. So you must transfer the weight to each foot, each time. Stopping. So we've done standing, we've done moving. I better show you how to stop because you're going to have to do that at some point. So to stop, I'm going to teach you three basic ways. One is with your toe stop, one is called a snow plow, and one is with your wheels. Because I find when I'm outside, I'd rather use my wheels to stop than my toe stop because obviously the asphalt's just going to wear your toe stop down really, really quickly. This is the snow plow. For the snow plow, you want to put your weight, just like when we did the snake pattern, on the outside on your little toes. Okay and just push outwards. So the next way to stop I'm going to show you is with your toe stop. So for this one you need to be able to balance on one leg to be able to put your toe stop down. So 
So the third way to stop is what I use when I'm outside because I don't want to wear my toe stop away. So rather than using my toe stop, I'm going to use my front two wheels. Well, I hope you're now rolling away and enjoying your new skates. Now this video has been a very brief overview of quite a few important points. So what we will be doing in the future is bringing out videos which explain each point in a lot more detail. But until then, this was Skatey. Happy rolling! Instead of using my toe stop, I'm going to use my front two wheels. Oh, my front two wheels. <laughs> I might just do that again. <laughs> I don't know what else did I say. I can't remember. I can't remember. Sounded good.